Welcome back to the story of liberty. This is your host, John Bona. Well, in England, anyone before Easter Sunday in 1555 does not acknowledge the authority of the Pope. He shall suffer for it. That's the edict. Come and register your names is the command given by the priests. The registers are provided at every parish. Of course, it's a different age. There shall be no more reading the Bible, they say, no more prayer books, no more liberty of conscience, no more thinking for yourself. There are several men whose blood they are thirsting. Mr. John Rogers is one. He is a preacher, a learned man, and when William Tyndale and Miles Coverdale were over translating the Bible into English, Mr. Rogers went over and aided them, and therefore he is considered an arch-heretic of the church. Besides, he went to Wittenberg, Germany, and studied with that monk who, when he was a boy, sung for his breakfast, Martin Luther. He married a German wife, and he has ten children, beautiful children, but the Pope does not allow priests to marry, so he's preaching at St. Paul's when Mary, Bloody Mary, comes to the throne. He could have fled, he knew what was ahead of him, but he's an Englishman and he has done nothing contrary to his conscience. And he decides he will stay. He is now a prisoner and for many months in the Newgate a prisoner, a terrible place. He's down in the dungeon and he's considered a heretic. He's had him in prison now confined in a room with robbers and murderers. Nothing but straw to lie upon. Mr. Rogers is now brought before the court and condemned to be burned. And he says, shall I not be allowed to at least bid farewell to my wife and children? No, is the savage reply. And now it's four o'clock in the morning of February 4th, 1555. The frost is on the window panes and this cold and gloomy prison. Priest Rogers is quietly sleeping. The jailer's wife taps on his shoulder and she says, Bishop Bonner is waiting for you. He rises and goes out to the hall where the bishop is waiting to degrade him from his office as a priest. That done, Rogers now bids farewell to others in the prison and the sheriff leads him out. It's still dark, but now the people have learned that he is to be burned and a crowd has assembled to see him die. Will he flinch? Will he recant, says his enemies? His wife and children get inside the area and they're waiting for him and, and he shall see them for the last time. He kisses them goodbye. In all sadness and grief, he goes with a firm step to the stake. The executioner binds the chain around him and heaps the burning coals in the wood, and in the dim gray of that winter morning, the people see him standing there, looking up to heaven with a smile upon his face. And they say, you can have the queen's pardon. Bloody Mary will pardon you if you will recant. He has nothing to recant. The fire just curls around him. He bathes his hands in the flames as if it were cold water. They look to him to see if he will beg for mercy, but nothing but prayer and praise comes from his lips. While those who have expected that he would stand firm rend the air with their shouts of joy. Ah, Bloody Mary. From out of those applauding cries shall come liberty to the human race. Go on, 
take your court of heresy. Send women and men to the stake, and for a brief period your power shall be shown. But every fire which you thus kindle shall be a beacon of light to the human race in the march to liberty.